let's have a look at some of the water-soluble vitamins. The primary function of a number of B vitamins is to act as an enzyme cofactor. In this case, thymine is involved with carbohydrate and the branch chain amino acid metabolism. Thymine also aids in supporting appetite and a healthy nervous system. Deficiencies result in a condition called beriberi. And I guess I should tell you that the next couple of vitamins, when I show you the toxicities, there might be a couple what I call yucky slides, so have a strong stomach. Beriberi is the condition associated with vitamin B1 deficiency. There isn't really an upper limit established for B, this B vitamin, primarily because it's water-soluble and we tend to excrete the excess, so toxicity isn't really well known. Major, major source of thymine is pork. It's also found in grains, breads, and cereal products. It is required by law to add thymine to process grains. Riboflavin or vitamin B2, also an enzyme cofactor. In this case, it's involved with fatty acid metabolism. A riboflanosis is the deficiency associated with riboflavin. What happens is, well, if you look at this tongue here on the left, if you're still looking at this slide, this is what a normal healthy tongue looks like. But the slides to the right of it, what happens is that this tongue is sore and swollen and they're cracking or sores at the corner of the mouth. This is referred to as a riboflanosis. Riboflavin, as I said, is involved in fatty acid metabolism and again toxicity is poorly documented, most likely because this water-soluble vitamin gets excreted when consumed in excess. Food sources, dairy products, you need to keep your milk in an opaque container because riboflavin is light sensitive and it will be broken down and inactivated in exposure. Riboflavin is also found in organ meats and enriched in whole grain and cereal products. This is another B vitamin that was, is required by law to be added to processed grains. Niacin or vitamin B3 is an enzyme cofactor that's involved with proteins, fats, and glucose or carbohydrate. The deficiency associated with this is called pellagra. When I was in school they referred to the major symptoms of pellagra as the four D's. Dementia, diarrhea, dermatitis, and I have to say I don't consider this last one a symptom, uh, but death. Toxicity is rare unless you are taking nicotinic acid supplements some people think that they can lower their cholesterol with these B vitamin supplements. I do not recommend people self-medicate. I recommend you see your primary care for any type of cholesterol treatment. Toxicity symptoms include, well, what I learned in school as the niacin flush. It's a violent flushing reaction caused from massive dilation of your blood vessels. Also, blurred vision, nausea, vomiting, and liver toxicity. Food sources, animal products, and enriched and whole grain products. Our comparison slide. Vitamin B12. This vitamin contains the mineral cobalt. It's found right here in the center. It's necessary for nucleic acid, red blood cell, and other new cell synthesis. Every time you make a new cell, you need vitamin B12. It's also important in nerve cell maintenance. It's a cofactor in energy metabolism, and it works closely with the B vitamin folic acid. Some interesting facts about vitamin B12. It needs a protein called intrinsic factor that's produced in the stomach in order to be absorbed into the body. If the gastrointestinal tract isn't healthy, whether it's because of a decrease in gastric acid production due to taking too many antacids or age, and you can't produce intrinsic factor, 
then you can develop a B12 deficiency. In this case, B12 must be given by injection. There's also a B12 nasal spray that can help you get the B12 into your bloodstream. Supplements may be helpful, but you have to take a lot of B12. With high dietary intake, excess B12 can be stored in the liver. That's why for folks who have eaten animal products for a long period of time, they can store a large amount of vitamin B12, and it can take up to seven years for deficiency symptoms to appear. The deficiency symptom that is primarily associated with B12 is pernicious anemia. Pernicious kind of means sneaky, and we call this pernicious anemia because it takes a long period of time to develop. Another name for this anemia is macrocytic normochromic anemia. What I want you to know is that pernicious anemia is also associated with nerve damage. That people who are vitamin B12 deficient may also have symptoms of tingling and numbness in their hands and feet. Animal products are an excellent source of B12. B12 is one of those nutrients that is of concern for the vegan and so I do recommend vegans take a supplement of B12 in order to prevent deficiency. Folate or folic acid is involved in the synthesis of nucleic acids along with vitamin B12 every time a new cell is made in your body you need folic acid. The major deficiency that I ask you to remember is something called spina bifida. Because folate or folic acid is involved every time a cell divides, if you are folic acid deficient and pregnant, in utero, the fetus can develop a condition called spina bifida. And what this is, is an incomplete closure of the spine. Without folic acid, to aid in cell reproduction, the spine doesn't close. This is, on your right, a normal spine. Over here is a spine with a bulge because the cells were unable to form. This condition is called spina bifida. Sources include raw leafy green vegetables, and other green vegetables. I tell people to remember vegetables as foliage, folate, foliage, whatever helps you to remember it. Also legumes, oranges, comparison. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is required for collagen in the skin, bones, teeth. It's a water-soluble antioxidant vitamin. It's also involved in the absorption of non-heme iron, or iron that comes from non-animal sources. We'll talk about that when we talk about iron. The major deficiency associated with vitamin C is scurvy. What happens is because your body is not getting enough vitamin C, you're unable to produce that collagen. Collagen, among the many places besides the folks that get it injected into their lips is gums. Collagen helps keep your teeth rooted in your gums. And in the absence of vitamin C over long periods of time, swollen, red, bleeding gums develop and your teeth can fall out. Toxicity can be seen in folks who take more than two grams of vitamins per day over an extended period of time. It can cause intestinal disturbances, especially diarrhea. Does vitamin C prevent colds? The latest data suggests that vitamin C can reduce the severity and duration of symptoms, but it does not prevent colds. I have here that smokers need an additional 35 milligrams of vitamin C per day. And we'll talk more about this in class, but it has to do with the fact that vitamin C is an antioxidant. And because smokers are in oxidative stress, vitamin C acts as an antioxidant to combat this stress. And so the smokers need more vitamin C in order for it to provide 
its normal bodily functions, including collagen synthesis, connective tissue formation. Doesn't mean I'm telling you to continue smoking, just take a vitamin C supplement. You need to quit smoking because you will die. Food sources, comparison 